K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. Welcome to the World Tour featuring Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. And this is going to be a big episode. Pivotal, 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 pivotal episode. Why is that? Well, we're going to be heading into a new state. Um, and we're going to be having a, a flight... Uh, over Lake Michigan. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So we're here at Chicago O'Hare and we're going to be going over here to Bitten Harbor which is over in Michigan so we're going to be flying right across. However, <clears throat> since we're using scenery disc number nine I thought uh, that uh, you all might be interested if we do another touch and go at Merrill C. Meg's so that way you can see um, the difference uh, of the airport with scenery disc number nine because once we leave this area yeah we're we're definitely not going to be back here so now's a good time as ever to be able to see Merrill C. Meg's uh, with scenery disc number nine <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to go south to Chicago Midway and then make a turn and we'll land on on uh, runway 36 facing the default uh, direction uh, that we always take off from touch and then we'll take right back off again uh, heading north uh, the Chicago O'Hare uh, Vore will take like an 8-5 radial which will take us over in this direction and also we'll tune in Keeler right there and uh, let's see that might be a little too much right there that's nine that's ooh, yeah no we don't want to do that um, so the nine zero radial of Keeler and that we should be able to meet somewhere up around here I don't think we're gonna be able to get this thing tuned in I think that's too far away but yeah well that should not be too hard I mean we got a zero nine zero uh, or zero eight eight or whatever um, one direction and a zero nine zero uh, from another vor so I think we'll be good um, let's go ahead and get started okay so first things first let's go ahead and set our nav radios uh, our destination which um, I like to always set up I put in nav 1 first so we'll set that for 116.6 Yeah, and just as I thought, it's too far away. And we'll set that for 090. Now keep in mind, the airport's probably about five, at least five miles away from uh, the VOR. All right, NAV2 is going to be Chicago here, 113.9. One one three point nine. Okay, didn't seem to want to turn on there. <laughs> Maybe it'll turn on once we get up in the air. All right, let's go ahead and get the flaps up because we don't need those down. And I think we're good. 
let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to be going straight, and then we're going to be uh, coming down uh, the runway, and I'll, take, I'll show you this here. So now this is scenery disc number nine. This is not the default scenery. I've been able to find out what went wrong on the last episode and why, why the frames were so bad. This works fine during daytime. Uh, you'll notice I, I'm, I'm, I don't have much of a delay uh, when selecting, uh, like zooming out or anything like that. So you can see that there's two, two major runways there that are um, paved in. And everything else is just kind of outlined <laughs> like it was on default. Kind of sloppy in a way. I mean, look at this. Look at this line. What that's doing there. That's kind of crappy. Um, but at nighttime, the taxiway lights, compared to the default scenery, there were more blue dots outlining the taxiways than there was on default. And since there was so much, it was, um, it was choking. It was choking on it. It, it, it was having a hard time. So... Um, during the day, we're fine, but at night, yeah, not going to work out so well. So, if you are flying uh, on the Commodore 64, and you happen to have scenery disc number 9, and you are flying at night, just be aware that it's probably going to give you problems, uh, just because there's just too much on the screen as far as graphics. I know that seems kind of weird, but is the only thing that makes sense to me because I saw the number of blue dots that were all over the place and that's just a lot for the Commodore 64 to draw um, and, and move and everything so <clears throat> but yeah during the daytime perfectly fine started here and you'll notice we're we're moving I mean it's you know the frame rates um, relatively normal It's a bit slow. <laughs> so it's really hard to make out where everything is at. So we're going to go here to the Oh, you know what? Let's just cross. We'll just cross over the uh they don't have these things drawn out very well. <laughs> you can see how there's a white line. Just look at this thing right here. So, I mean, some of these just were not done very well. And I'm curious if it's like this on the Microsoft version. Sadly, I'm not going to be able to find out uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2 because the scenery disk has got uh, like a copy protection thing on it and the image I have kind of bypasses that and as a result uh, there are tracks that are missing and those tracks happen to be certain areas of scenery such as Chicago O'Hare uh, that are gone. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're just not there. And there's a whole bunch of other airports. So the only way that I can think of to get it to work is through the Teledisc image, which I have, but I have not been able to find anything that can actually read it. Uh, from what I understand, PC emulator is supposed to be able to read Teledisc images. I have yet to have that success. do have some frame issues here, but it's not as bad as it was at night. At least the delay when looking out windows is not as bad. It was really bad with um, in this area and it didn't freeze up until we got closer and there were more blue dots so I I know that's what it is and CCS 64 is actually one of the best uh, Commodore 64 emulators out there so I think it's a good possibility that on a real Commodore 64 it probably had the same type of problem. I honestly don't remember when it came because uh, I had scenery disc number 9 uh, when I was playing this on the Commodore 64 back in the 80s. I just don't remember if I had problems with Chicago O'Hare or not. I may have not tried flying it at night. It may have only been during the daytime, so I never really thought of it. I think we are ready to go for our exciting flight. <laughs> Someone took the runway right under from out underneath us. screen <laughs> that'd be my monitor so yeah it's a bit choppy right here but it's at least playable what is that is that a tower oh I guess they actually put a tower here at Chicago O'Hare I have wonder if that some of the problems that we're getting Yeah, 
this is rough. This area is rough. I don't know if Midway is going to have as much problem or not. There you go. Gives you a chance to see Chicago here from scenery disc number nine. This line that's just way off. I don't know what in the world this thing is. Um, kind of reminds me of what we've been experiencing with. Microsoft Flight Simulator number one, where um, the graphics are, they're just, they don't display right, so the lines are all whacked and going all over the place. I thought maybe the first version of Flight Simulator was just seriously bugged, but no, it's... The IBM PC had a, I don't know, I don't want to say, I, I guess it's hardware dependent or something. Even though you can emulate one on the PC EM, Flight Simulator 1 was depending upon hardware, um, and since hardware is not available it's not displaying correctly if that makes any sense so there's downtown Chicago right over there we'll get a closer look at it here in a bit Okay, that should be midway right there. And what I thought was the Kankakee River, I don't think is the Kankakee River. I think that's just a river. And I had mentioned the last flight that there was this blue line and I thought uh, I thought it was the Kankakee River and uh, actually don't think it was So you can see now the frame rate seems to be a lot better. And I'm able to switch windows a lot a lot quicker now too. There's just there's a lot of lines and stuff going on over there at Chicago Hair. And putting them into 3D space or or grid or whatever you want to call it puts a lot on the on the old machine even if it's emulated
Okay, so Chicago Megs is probably right there. going to be a killer flight. I haven't, um, no pun intended, with uh, Killer TV or Killer Gamer, but <laughs> I haven't done something like this in a while. And I don't mean just flying from airport to airport, but I mean flying over, like, you know, a major, um, a major landmark. And, and Lake Michigan is, that's one of the Great Lakes. It's, uh, I think it's a landmark. Okay, so it looks like Midway has got some filled runways. I don't know how many, but we'll find out when we go over it. Which is another good reason for us to fly over uh, Midway, so that way you can take a look and see how scenery disc number 9 uh, did on this. Now the frame rate's not too bad. Uh, it looks like it's it's improved, so I think we're going to be okay from here. Just O'Hare for some reason. It's just that area just has problems. Doable during the day, but at night, ooh. Somehow I got a feeling, though, at night, this airport might have some problems, too. I don't know. Let's take a look at this on the map view here. So it looks like uh, some of the taxiways are filled in there. And some areas are kind of lined out, like right here. So there's like like the parking areas there, but then you have like a line, I guess, to follow as far as the um, <laughs> as far as the taxiway. You know, here's something here. It's like this is filled in, but then it's not filled in. But right here is filled in, uh, and this is an outline. And uh, who knows what all? Maybe this is supposed to be filled in. Who knows? All this is filled in. That's filled in. So, it, I don't know. It just looks incomplete. We're looking down. <laughs> looking down at Midway. seem like we're moving. Okay. I think
think we are good to start turning. <clears throat> One thing I do remember when flying on the Commodore 64 is that there would be some delays of some sort. Hey, look, fuel box way out in the middle of nowhere. Because I'm like sitting there turning, and then there was like a 15 second delay, and then the next time it's like this. <laughs> Nav 1 is tuned in 72 miles away. Putting in more scenery here. Now might be a good time to start dropping some flaps. Let's get ourselves slowed down. see anything on the radar here. <laughs> I am not sure. <laughs> This doesn't seem right. <laughs> I don't think it act is actually going out that direction. Oh, maybe it is. There it is. I see it. Right there. got a twisted look to it. Okay, this is where we start using the rudder here. Last bit of flaps.
is like the leaning tower of Chicago buildings. <laughs> area just kind of looks looks off Don't even see any runways yet. It's like, which version of Megs is this? Is this the one that's torn down? <laughs> down. Do not stall. Got it. Full power. back up. And take a look behind us. See, and there you go. That's Meg's. downtown Chicago just to kind of see some differences over here. <laughs> the line disappeared on it. So are we going to see anything else? Any other further definitions? Doesn't seem like it. I thought that would at least be outlined or something, but... Okay, time to go ahead and make our way to Michigan. <laughs> I 
nothing but blue. <laughs> blue lake, blue sky, occasional green here and there. You're not going to be able to depend on the on what you see as far as whether you're straight or level or not. Make use of your artificial horizon. There we go. Because the way it was, you know, this <laughs> and things were disappearing. <laughs> There's our wiggly waggly Chicago back there. Bye Chicago! We are definitely not going to be back for a long while, so... That's it, folks. this whole time I was thinking that this was gonna that we didn't want to fly this at night because it would be all dark <laughs> instead it's all blue there is 643 OBI number two is beginning to center Turn just a little bit to meet it. Of course, we're not overly worried about this one. We're concerned about this one. This is the one that we want to actually follow. I think if we get ourselves turned to around 60, a heading of 60, Navy Chicago is back to <laughs> those buildings. <laughs> oh my goodness, those buildings are horrible. So I guess it's up to you on what you want to use for the Chicago area. Do you want to use the default or do you want to use scenery disk number nine? Looking 
south. Yeah, well, at least we're seeing more of the horizon now. So, out there, about 55 miles, is Michigan. Well, since we have ourselves uh, a bit of a flight here, I figured I would just go ahead and have some lunch. <laughs> so I got uh, some frozen oh you can't really see it very well. oh nice <laughs> <sighs> something to do with my family and dropping forks although I'm like <sighs> tilting this thing like way more than what it needed to be yeah so these are just the frozen burritos you can pick up from the store, like in the big bag, with um, pineapple salsa on it. With a mixed rock star of lime, Pineapple, grapefruit, and pomegranate, I believe. We have a place that makes them. Hey, you know, 55 miles, my goodness. Gotta do something. Hey, look at the brown smears that we got back here. <laughs> that represents Chicago. Straight and level flight. Pretty close to it at 3,500. Hey man, on flights like this, you gotta you gotta find something that's gonna keep you busy. I don't know if you want to sit, you know, sit there and stare out, you know, <laughs> that screen for that long. Long flights over lakes give me the munchies. And of course the rock star. Oh, well that just helps me, you know. That just helps me get the energy I need to load up new scenery. Actually, I think it's... Yeah, it's actually uh, made Chicago disappear. <laughs>
You know, it was one thing when we left the default Chicago area and went into scenery disc number nine and started spreading out a little bit, but this is beginning to feel even uh, more special just because we're flying over the Great Lake and heading over into uh, Michigan. Getting a lot of uh, loading here. I don't know what it's loading. So I'm curious, on each of the other simulators, when I'm crossing um, Lake Michigan, should I eat burritos on those two? And maybe as the, um, as we go through the simulators where each one is better than the next, maybe the burritos get better in quality. <laughs> You know, and if the day day comes where we got the flight simulator 2020 and we're going over the, uh, Lake Michigan, you know, it could be like some platter of <laughs> burritos or something like that. Maybe those would be home cooked burritos. Yep, definitely nothing behind us now except for green. Chicago is way back there now. Oh, what do we got? About 40 miles left? some information here. <clears throat> I'm gonna share some share a video of mine with you. Just recently got a new subscriber. One of the one of the viewers uh, was watching the Amiga, and he's like, "Lol, every landing you plow head first into the runway like a Durando bomb with a minus five hundred to thousand v <laughs> VSI. You should learn how to flare your landings." Uh, I don't know if you're watching this or not, but they do get better. <laughs> It was it was the one for Cloud Field. That just happened to be a bad landing. I mean, on uh, just for the Omega, they aren't all like that. And I could have easily um, did a save state, and if it didn't work out, I could just you know. So I'm giving you. A, I mean, sure, I can perfect each of these flights and, and landings and stuff if you really want, but I don't know. I just thought that takes away from the fun of it.
broken. Figure out how to do this. Okay, I have uh, something up here, um, kind of to go along with the theme of Lake Michigan. Um, I did a video, a cinematic video, uh, it's about 3 hours 20 minutes long, and it's with uh, using FSX Gold and Mega Scenery, and it was flying from Ford Airport, Wisconsin to Rattlesnake Island, Ohio, and during that flight, uh, we crossed Lake Michigan. So, I thought it might be uh, fun to show that video, <clears throat> at least this section right here. So that there is the A2A Bonanza. my favorite plane. So you can see the mega scenery there. And I got uh, Live ATC, report Live ATC <laughs> And I do these uh, little music segments. Now later on, I actually started composing and doing my own uh, music. I think this one's by a geographer. So there we are, crossing Lake Michigan. There is a separate music video for this too on the channel. <clears throat> well, it's not really a music video, but it's a segment. Yeah, that's the A2A Accusim. Bonanza V35. I got it for prepared also. Love that plane. Yeah, I know this is the uh, that free to use music on YouTube, but I like this song. This song is kind of cool. Seems to fit. Of course, that sound in the background is actually the Commodore 64 <laughs> of what we're flying right now. So these cinematic videos, they are, oh, need to make our turn, they are divided into chapters. Thank you. 
So just kind of looking, looking around and looking at the, uh, the lake. So, yeah. uh, uh. I enjoy putting that together. And take a look, we got some scenery coming up over here. A road! Okay, so this next part of the same video is just as we are getting to the uh, other side of Lake Michigan here, so Pentwater, Michigan. That's mega scenery earth. And those sounds are actually from uh, something that just happened. They were just on the on the feed that I recorded. See, I'll do external shots. It doesn't always have music going through. It's just certain areas. See the coastline there. And there are uh, three-dimensional trees on here. It's a add-on that I have uh, called New Vecta Landscapes. So it adds buildings, it adds trees, uh, so that way the mega scenery isn't just flat. So yeah. Just thought I'd share that with you. That's our airport, right there. Because there's no other airport on the coast. down some flaps, bring our throttle down. that worked out with that video my goodness I didn't think we were that close so Benton Harbor might actually be 10 miles 
from the Vor. So it's probably 13 miles away. And that would make sense if we're just now saying it. check and see if okay no <clears throat> looking to see if there are any ILS's or, or anything Feels like a pretty cool accomplishment, you know, flying over uh, Lake Michigan across from it and going to the airport on the other side. hard to judge how far away that is. I might be able to use another VOR to give me an idea. South Bend might do it. 115.4 doing nav two. One one five oh. oops, I went down a little too much. There we go. <coughs> going to see just where we are. About 3.30. Okay. Yeah, I can see whereabouts where we are. I'd show that, but I messed up my screen size for my display <laughs> when I was showing the video. Actually, no, wait a minute. Yes, I can do that. Then again, maybe not. I 
thought I could. It's okay, we're almost landed. Big city. City of Bitten. We'll take a look at that on a satellite map as soon as we land. using the rudder here to make some fine adjustments. I don't have to do this on the later simulators, but with like the Commodore 64 and especially this one, it's like the only way I can get lined up is by using the rudder because it's so hard to determine if you're coming straight at it or if you're coming at an angle. It's like you may be thinking you're, you're, you're going straight towards the runway, but you're actually not. This one's got three runways, okay. Yeah, I guess it kind of does. It's hard to tell from the copy. Oh, 
boy, we just stopped on a dime there. I didn't even hit the brakes. <clears throat> and I am just going to check... Pretty sure this is it, but let me check. I'm going to check Keeler for a moment. That's the one that we're tuned in on Nav 1. Just want to make sure that this is indeed the airport, should be. Yeah, that looks about right. 80 degrees. Yeah, this is it. think we have any fuel here. Yeah, I think this is just a regular airport. We can zoom out here. And apparently we can't zoom out any further than that. <laughs> thought you'd be able to zoom out and see the continental US. Um, I guess you can't on the Commodore 64. I thought you could. I was pretty sure you could, but maybe not. All right. Well, I see a perfect parking spot right up in this little triangle area, a little triangle grass area. So that's what we're going to do. We'll head right over there. If we're moving, we don't appear to be moving. Is this why we stopped on a dime? <laughs> there we go. We're moving now. I see it. Maybe. Ah, oh, don't tell me this is another scenery area where... Where, like, we don't see a frame update until, like... Oh, no, I can look out the... I'm not having any trouble looking out the window. I'm just not moving. I don't think the brakes are on. I don't think there's a problem with my keyboard. There we go. I hit the space bar. It may it might have been stuck. Kind of weird. Here's our grass area. Ah. <sighs> Nice little flight over Lake Michigan, and we're here at Benton Harbor, right on the other side. And um, I shared with you during the flight uh, part of my video of FSX Gold, uh, where I crossed Lake Michigan on that. So, yeah, you know, I thought it was kind of a you know neat little thing just to share with you. Kind of relates to what we're doing here. It wasn't to the same place but it was just a fact of crossing Lake Michigan. And I just thought that was kind of a neat part of that particular flight. 
Um, we saw Chicago uh, with scenery just number nine, and it was kind of scary looking. <laughs> uh, with the leaning tower of, or I should say, the leaning skyscrapers of Chicago. Yeah, not not too impressive uh, with that, but maybe the scenery actually looks better with uh, uh, the PC uh, version, <clears throat> which we'll be able to see a lot better when we uh, do this on Flight Simulator 3, because the Flight Simulator 2 um, scenery discs are, are use a converter so that way you can use it on Flight Simulator 3. Oh, and we were talking about taking a look at Benton Harbor. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So here it is, a uh, satellite map, and it's not called Benton Harbor anymore. It's called Southwest Michigan Regional Airport. Uh, but it is the, uh, the uh, airport code is KBEH. But yeah, so uh, we landed on this runway right there, runway 10. And then we saw these other ones as we, that is a runway, oh, that's a closed runway. But it's here, it's, it's here on this simulator, but that one's closed. So they just got the two runways now. But here it is, uh, zooming out. So you can see the city of uh, Benton Harbor here. The Pew Pew, or is that the Paw Paw? Paw Paw River, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so and if as far as the the map is concerned, it's it's right there. That's that's where we're at. I'll pull this up here so you can see it. So right there, Benton Harbor. you another look here. Oh, the Mason Jar Cafe. Where's the airport? There it is. So, one more look at the Southwest Michigan Regional Airport. <laughs> Word Up Ministry. I hear Word Up and I think of the song by Cameo. Word Up. Oh, Corn did that too. So, there we go. Um, we got our flight and showed you the real deal as far as on a satellite. And... I you know, hope you enjoyed this flight, and if you did, leave a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it, and other viewers out there will appreciate it, too. It'll make this video more accessible to them. They'll be able to see it uh, show up in their feed or, you know, whatnot. And uh, subscribe and be a part of our killer community. It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Looking to hit uh, 200 subscribers. <laughs> not yet, not there yet, but... Uh, I'm taking it just one step at a time. So let's build this up, spread the word about the channel. That would be awesome. And then the notification bell, ring that. Um, it's not a dinner bell or anything, but what it does do is when there's a new video uploaded to the channel, you get this little notification that says, hey, guess what? There's a new video uploaded to the channel. You might want to check it out. So good stuff for you and good stuff for every everyone else <laughs> uh, other than all of that I do appreciate you watching and I will see you on the next leg of our journey in Michigan mm -hmm.